Yeah. So Vince, let's next talk about guys that are on the fence. Okay. And there's a lot of defensive linemen. Yeah. And and we're yeah. gonna talk and and one offensive lineman. I want to start with the offensive lineman, and then we'll just kind of go through. And that is Jarrett Patterson. This is an interesting one. So first, let's start yeah. with the intel. Okay. Okay. The intel I've heard is for a long time, it was he's leaving, he's leaving, he's leaving. There were a lot of reasons for that. I don't really care to get into. They weren't necessarily all draft related. It was, I'm going to go because coming back is not going to improve my, my, my stock for reasons that I, I think people can understand where I'm going with this one without me saying it. Now, in the last week, I've been told some different things. I've been told that he's now leaning towards coming back. It's not decided. He still has some draft NFL draft feedback he has to get from people. Uh, he is going to be obviously one of the top draft picks. I talked to somebody today. I'm going to tell you exactly what he said to me uh, about, about Jarrett Patterson. He said um, he still might go in the top 50 if he comes out. Well, top 50 is middle of round two. That's about where Liam Meikenberg got drafted. Yeah, that you go. <laughs> but I, I think as more and more scouts dive into his 2021 film, it's going to hurt his draft stock. Mm-hmm. And and I don't blame Jarrett for that as much as sure. But it's just, other it's, just a, it's just a fact right now as we sit here that his senior film or his his 2021 film just isn't great. I mean, he he definitely had some games where he struggled. Um and it was not a good as good of a year this year as it was last year in right. 20. No just no it, and that's not even opinion based that's just facts you know what i mean right. and, and and i get it and i'm not saying who's to blame or anything like that um at least not in this podcast um but the fact of the matter is it's going to give him pause i would imagine the other factor of it too is is there's the third year starter factor right and this is his third year as a starter so the thought is okay i've started three years that's usually when things go yeah, and you you leave, but the difference is is I think because of the difference in coaching he received, he may need that fifth year like Zach Martin did because Zach Martin was one of those guys that came back. Chris uh, Zach Martin was one of those few guys that came back for a fourth year as a starter. Yeah, you know Mike McGlinchey was a three year starter. Q was a three year starter. Um, Stanley was a three year starter. Liam Meikenberg was a three uh, three year starter, right? Robert Haynes, he's the only four year starter they had. Starter, yeah. But that's because he started as a freshman, true right. freshman. Nobody and, else did. And he was a, you know, he's a part time starter, right? right? I mean, he was, but right. you know what I mean? But yeah. Right. I mean, he he didn't, he only, he technically only started three games as a but freshman, he was, but he rotated every series. Right. right. And then, you know, uh, Aaron Banks was a two and a half year starter. So he would stay a little bit longer, but I think Jarrett has the kind of body and the game and and because of the fact that he wasn't necessarily developed like some of those guys that have gone after three years, I do think he needs another year. And I think another year with a better offensive line coach, I'm just going to come out and say it, is something that could have a big impact on his draft stock next year. Because I think Jarrett Patterson, when he's playing well, is a first-round draft pick. Yeah. No doubt. Right yeah. now, he's probably, a, a you know, based on what I'm being told. Again, this is this is me just kind of passing along info. He's probably a second. He's probably about where Liam Meikenberg was picked last year, where Aaron Banks, Liam Meikenberg, which is – that's pretty good. I mean, you're still going to make right. a lot of money. <clears throat> Absolutely. But you, if you're able to jump up 20 spots, 25, 30 more. spots, <laughs> you're going to make even more money. And yeah. the other part of it, too, is linemen are not viewed the same way skill players are. Age actually is not something that hurts linemen. It actually helps. It's, it's the opposite. Yeah, exactly. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Age, age, and you know, time on the field. And it's just because right. of the position of offensive line. Generally, those guys are older because they usually red shirt because they got to get bigger and stronger and all, and all of those things. So when you if you're looking at a three year starter, most of the time those guys are fifth years, which right. means they're twenty three ish years old when like Mike McGlinchey was a three-year starter as a fifth-year guy right uh, exactly that third right. year is usually their fifth year usually right. and there's the always guy, Liam yeah. Eikenberg was that way right. Kramer was that way Banks was kind of like I said two and a half because he came in late in 2018 but he would have needed a fifth year to get that extra time and so yeah I mean you're you're right it, it I think there's a lot of value and merit to Jarrett coming back part of this is going to be who actually is the O-line coach yeah absolutely and I think that's going to have an 
again, this is just me reading some of the tea leaves based on a couple things I've heard. I have a feeling like he may not make a decision, an official decision until, um, until he, they find out who the new line coach is going to be. Sure. Sure. And, and that could factor. Cause I've, I've been told the senior bowl really wants him. And once he commits to the senior bowl, that's then a he's sign that he's out. leaving. Yeah, exactly. And and senior so, bowl is a huge opportunity for those guys too. So he's not going to well, Notre Dame offensive linemen have done a great job yes, of that. So he's exactly he, right. he's probably going to want to make a decision sooner rather than later. But I think it's just with the current situation, he's going to need to hear. He's going to need to hear, uh, sort of. Okay, well, what are what are my options, right? And, and who, what, who is what, my own yeah, coach? Exactly. So, What's the direction of the coaching search? Because I think that's going to be huge. I and I feel like they're going to have that wrapped up sooner than later. I'm not that right. I know who it's going to be, but I feel like. Yeah, they, and, you, and they will have on a new the line coach that, next year. You know, things have have moved in a direction of the fact that they're looking for an offensive line coach. That's, that's yeah, they, they will have. I, I'll say this confidently. It's what we put on the message board at our right. breakdown a couple days ago. They are going to have a new offensive line coach. Right. Next year. So they're looking actively. And so that's why I feel like right. this is going to be taken care of sooner than sooner than later. So. Uh, that we, we can hey, find and, out. And about I want to throw this up there too. Tyler Roberts says, Brian, just for a line coach. If you want them to suck, then yes, I'll take the job because uh, I would not do a good job. I'm a quarterback's receivers guy. Okay. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so, so obviously that'll be a, a big topic of conversation here once we get kind of through the bowl game as far as who that, who that's going to be. But yes, okay. I, I fully anticipate that Jeff Quinn uh, will not be back next year in the Notre Dame. will not have a new offensive line coach who that is right now. That I'm not sure of. I know yeah. that we obviously put something on the message board about Chris Watt and Harry Heastan, but that's not the only that's not the only path they're looking towards. There's some sure. other coaches. It's going to be with Chris Watt, right? Because that's a name that's out there. It's going to be exactly like the Marcus Freeman hire. You make that hire because you feel he's the best guy for your present and your future. Mm -hmm. And if they have another coach that they think could come in and do a better job now and moving forward, they will hire that other coach, no matter what Chris Watts relationship is to Tommy Reese or Notre Dame or anyone else. Right. Right. It's going to be about getting the right guy. Now, do I think that they may feel Chris Watt is that guy? Yes, they could end up coming to that. So if they end up keeping Watt or, re or bringing Watt back, it'll be because they think he is a star in the making and can do a great job, not because of the personal relationship. I have been assured of that. So sure. um, that's why they're also doing their due diligence to make sure they're vetting other candidates. That's that's the latest intel that I was told. So that's why you got to tune in to Irish Breakdown. We're not just going to throw out a bunch of random names as to who we'd like them to have. Yeah, right. Uh, this is just kind of, we're going to tell you what we hear, Okay. I want to throw this out there from Patrick Barnes. It's a super chat. There are a few above this that we will mm -hmm. get to, of course, but it is, you know, pertinent to what we are talking about at the moment. Is Quinn leaving us or is Freeman making staff changes? Either way, that's great news. Thanks for another great podcast while I work. No problem. This, this is a staff change, Patrick. 